Hello everybody and welcome to the free webinar about practical tips to deliver your assignment. The webinar includes information about acquisition of large clients, delivery of customized services, procurement implementation and also industrial and commercial process development. The today's schedule looks as follows. First, you will hear practical tips, which will be given to you in a 20-minute presentation. Of course, all your comments are welcomed via the chat window. And during the webinar, we beg you to turn off the microphone. The second part consists of the discussion. You are then allowed to turn your microphone on, and if you have any questions at the end, the presenter is willing to answer these. Due to the fact that webinars are broadcast via the internet, some impl implication could appear during the webinar. If there is no signal anymore, you will see it on the wireless icon at the, um, below the picture on the right side. And if this happens, first try refreshing your browser and then try to log in again, please. Now, let me introduce Chasun, who is a very experienced project consultant, trainer and coach. His knowledge is based on several years of experience in this field and he has worked in over 35 countries. That is why he has a deep understanding of global practices. He is also the author of the book overview of the PMB OK Guide. Also, he has two volunteer roles. And before he had, he began as a project consultant, he was an engineer. So Chasun, um, we will be willing to listen to your presentation. Well, thanks very much indeed, Sharon, for the introduction there. And um, as you said, I'm going to make the presentation um, and then at the end we'll have a chance to pick up questions. But if any of the participants want to send in a chat message, we'll read them out at the end. So here's the situation. We have a challenge in business. Um, for example, we have to get large clients. This would be for people who are involved in selling and they know that it's much more than just making a phone call and meeting people. Maybe they have to get some special version of a product made and test it and so on. It might take several months. And you, you can do that just by working your way through it. Um, but it makes a lot more sense to think through what you're doing in a situation like that because you can get through it faster. And when that leads to sales, that, that's obviously sensible. Another thing is that you might have um, an opportunity to uh, bring your company in conformance with this general data protection regulation. And again, that involves a lot of people who know what to do, but how you get them to actually do it is a big challenge. And then you have delivery of customized products and services. Maybe you have something that is more or less the same every time you sell it, but there are lots and lots of details which are different. Or transferring production from one place to another, or procurement where you're trying to evaluate um, suppliers in a different part of the world. And to do that, you need more, again, than just telephone calls and so on. Or maybe uh, industrial or commercial process development. There are lots of situations and the reason they're challenging is um, that the value of the work is high, so everyone says, yeah, please do it. And nobody disputes that it's important and everyone wants to do the work, but getting everyone else to actually do the work is very difficult. And particularly if you don't have direct authority, which is a very common situation. So, um, I'd, I'd ask the question, what business situations you know where it's hard to get things done? 
And I'd ask you to just put a message in the chat and we'll read those ones out later. But situations where you know where it's like that, that you have something that you're supposed to do. And by definition, a lot of the people that you're interacting with are not in your direct chain of command, particularly if they're somewhere else uh, outside the company. You, you can't just tell them what to do. And yet you still have to deliver it. So if you have some examples of that, that would be really good if you'd put them into the chat um, over the next moment or two. So this is the um, a summary of that type of scenario. These are the various things that you need to do, something that must be done. Um, it's too big for you to do it all on your own anyway, even if you wanted to. And Anything in business takes different skills. So it's unlikely that you're an expert in everything. And so you have to delegate, but to people who don't, you don't have authority to, to tell them what to do. And it takes a lot of time and effort. So that's the challenge. So we have one message coming in, for example, um, on, the, uh, on the chat. Um, about a suggestion of a particular environment similar to that. Um, thank you, Hilary. Establishing a global program, uh, for example, a leadership training to be rolled out globally. That's exactly what I'm talking about. You know what to do. Um, there's a lot of people involved. Everyone says it's very important, but it's very, very hard to actually make it move. So thanks for that um, input. And you, you, the roadblocks are like this. It can be very difficult to explain exactly what you want done. Unless you do that, people won't do it. If you tell them in general, I want it, they say, well, come back when you know what you want. So you have to be very, very detailed in saying what you want. And it can be very difficult to say it to the person that you want to do it. Maybe you can't get at them because they live somewhere else or they're in a different organization or something. And then when you've told them, you want to influence them to do it. Maybe they don't want to do it, or maybe their boss says, oh, you're too busy on other things. So you've got several levels of difficulty there. And they're all very obvious sort of things, but unless you get them absolutely right, things don't move forward. So I've got three tips here. One of them is that when you're working out what to do, use this particular sequence to put the information together. Why you want to do it, what you want them to do, then exactly what the work is, then when, and then at the end, who. If you do things in that order, it tends to be a little bit easier to get things moving. So the first thing, as I say, is exactly why and what. People like to know why they're doing it. So just telling them that they have to do it is usually not enough. They have to be told they're part of a big program. And there was a classic case where President Kennedy apparently asked somebody that was sweeping the floor what he was doing. And he said he was putting somebody on the moon <laughs> and he was working in NASA. So why um, motivates people? And then you have to say what it is we're doing, putting people on the moon. You can't just give generalities like we want more customers or we want people to be happy or something like that. And then um, we have to um, say what the actual work is. So this is the next level of detail. Even uh, if, for example, I said I want you to organize um, uh, shall we say a conference uh, on a particular topic in the company. Um, you really need to go into more detail. You need to organize the location. You need to organize the speakers. You need to organize the food. And again, unless you go to that level of detail, um, probably it won't happen. People will not, not quite sure which way to go. And then we have to work out when we want them done. So, for example, if we've got a conference, we want the invitations to go quickly. And we, to do that, we need to know that the room has been booked and the speakers and so on. But most of the other things can probably be done later. So unless we work out when we're going to do things, again, the picture is not clear. And at this stage, we can start saying, well, who should do it? So, for example, if you've got a conference and it's being run by a particular department, then we can go to the departmental head and say, well, you know, you know all your customers and the, the important people. You put the list together. You invite them. But it doesn't make sense to get to that level of detail until actually the overall picture is in place. It seems to make it works. It tends to work better if we pick people we say, this is what I want done, will you do that? Rather than saying, I want somebody to help and then trying to work out what to do. So the second tip 
is to use a single flip chart when you're summarizing your presentation. You, you will put all your ideas together. This is how we're going to do things in this sort of order. These people are there. But you don't want 25 pages because everybody who comes into the project is going to come in you know, not knowing anything about it, whether it's the, the, the regional manager, it's the person who's going to do most of the work, or it could be somebody relatively on the edge of things like a courier who's going to deliver an important part. You need something that brings them very quickly. You know, this is our big program of blah. These are the things that we're going to do and so on. And so you would summarize that information, but try and get it on a single flip chart and these days we all have telephones we all have cameras so it's very easy to take a picture um, which wouldn't have been very easy a few years ago and then the third tip is to use a storytelling approach to explain your assignment to everybody affected so instead of just telling people what to do you start at the beginning well this is what we're doing we're running a conference and i want you to organize the room and um, in the context of organizing the room we need to think about microphones and seating and we've got the contractor who's going to help lay out the chairs but as far as the microphones are concerned that's an in-house service and so on in order if you explain that in order then people understand where you're coming from whereas if you just say go in there and fix the room they don't. I'm always amazed that I go into rooms in hotels um, which are set up supposedly for conferences and they put more effort in getting the water on the table than actually a microphone that works or a projector that you can see. So what we do is we apply these ideas with customers in workshops um, to these big demands that they have. And the bigger it is, the more it makes sense to do it in that environment. If something is worth 100,000 or a million euro or dollar or francs, then, then it makes sense to do these sort of things. So here's one scenario. Um, there was a product being made in Canada and it was being sent over to France and it kept getting rejected, even though it was being checked before it went out and everyone said, yeah, it should be right. And the, what we got involved in was to work out what was the situation. And it, it turned out that what we needed was to agree on both sides how to go about it. In other words, a mini project, you know, well, we collect the information and then with these people putting inputs and we assemble it and other. And it involved actually even transatlantic flights and telephone calls on the weekend and all that. But the interesting thing was that our client went into the customer and uh, they identified the problem on the very first day. And it turned out that there was an issue to do with intellectual property that had not been surfaced. And because of that, um, the, the reception of this, these orders was being blocked. And the value of that was 10 million euros. So it was big. It was worth having. Here was the second situation um, where the, the client was delivering products into the Chinese market. And every time they did that, they had to get these particular products regulated or signed off by the regulators. And they were spending a lot of money on doing it. And also they were from Europe. So they found China quite difficult uh, just from a cultural perspective. And what they wanted to do was to recoup some of those costs. So again, in one of these environments, we worked out that what would be worth doing would be having a standard approach um, to going to customers. And in effect, a standard project with standard template, we do this and then we do that. And you know, we collect the information and we document it and we put it in and so on. And then they were able to go to the customer and they were able to say, um, uh, like this is our standard way of doing it and we think it's reasonable for to share the cost because after all you'll be using this product as well and um, that worked very well so in fact that gave them a tool to recoup half of these costs and while they were doing the work it was much easier because they didn't have to start from zero every time now a third um, scenario was um, with a manufacturer again in France who had problems, uh, delivery problems, just they were had too much to deliver. And the client got a bit annoyed because they got late deliveries, which is very understandable. And what they decided was um, that they would go to, um, they would deliver really well for, you know, best part of half a year. And then they would go to the customer and say, well, we, we've got it right now. Can we talk to you again? And then 
their, their product was going into something was also going on to another chain of producers who were going to uh, work on the product further. And they thought, well, we'll go to these other, this second level um, of customer, if you like, the customer's customer, and we'll, uh, we, we'll sort of ask them if they would say what fine product we have and sort of pull us through from the other end. So they had this thing, they were going to be working for the best part of half a year. And then they were going to start this. But actually what came out of the discussion was that the customers' customers were not annoyed because they were not <laughs> affected by the late deliveries. So there was nothing to stop going to talk to them now. And by doing that, this particular activity of building up relationships with the customer's customer could start 20 weeks earlier. So that's a very, very significant time advantage in any project. Okay, so let's just summarize what the tips are again. Um, one is that if we want something done, we try and pull the information together in this order, in this sequence. We work out why, so we can tell people, you know, we, we're organizing a conference or we're changing the production line from this environment to the other one, whatever. And then what in some more detail, and the work itself goes down into that. Uh, sorry, the what is the, the, high, the highest level, and then the work itself is the next level down. And then we work out when it needs to happen. And then when we've got all that, we start looking for people. Now we might have people involved all the way around, but we, we sort of, we, we push that question once the information is there. If we look for people to sort of help and then work it through, it doesn't tend to work as easily. And then the second tip is that summarize this story that we've just spoken about on a single flip chart and use it for everybody who's coming in touch with the project. Use it for regional manager, the, 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 the person who's going to be assigned to assist the project manager, somebody in one of the departments who's very involved, a supplier, it doesn't matter who it is, use the same presentation and think in terms of a single flip chart and maybe a photograph and even if you can't meet them, you can send the photograph and talk to them by telephone. And then use a storytelling approach uh, to explain your assignment. So that's, that's an important one because people uh, receive information in a logical sequence. If they don't have that, then it makes it very hard to, to sort of pick up where, where the story is going. So um, just to summarize then what Scatterwork can do. We have professionals who um, who work with people who are themselves professionals in whatever line of business, and they don't want to be project managers, but they do want to benefit from project skills on their work to make it easier, faster, cheaper, less risky, and so on. Um, we have locations all over the place, as you see, North America, Europe, and um, Asia, and uh, New Zealand, right down the end there. Um, and we'd be very happy to spread out into other countries on, on invitation. We have a lot of different types of workshops.